Welcome to our program today. This is Britain Arise, Reaching Our Home, bringing the word of life and courage and power into your life. Now, this is the time to be filled with the Spirit of God. And today we're going to be looking at the power of the Spirit and the power of the Word. Uh, for some time now, we've been talking about the power of the Word separately and then also the power of the Spirit. Now, it's a spirit. Um, we have series of teachings on, on this. But now we want to look into the power of the Spirit and the power of the Word. We want to look at both together. Now, I want to teach a believer how to get the power of God in their lives. It is time to know how to get the power of God in your life. You know, sometimes you just see many believers say they want the power of God, they want the power of God, but they don't know how. Oh, some will say they're hungry for God, but they don't know what next, what they need to do. Now, today I'm going to be teaching you what you need to do, how important it is when you begin to get the Word of God into your life. Some will say, well, they pray, they pray, but it seems as if nothing really happens. I want to encourage the believer. I want to lead you. I'm going to be talking about the power of the Spirit, the power of the Word, and how prayer was going to come. I'm not, I'm not talking about prayer in itself. However, I'm just going to teach you how prayer will come. You see, the power of the Word and the power of the Spirit will result into a powerful prayer in your life. There are many that desire to have a prayer life, but they don't have it. They can't. Now, as a believer, to be able to have prayer in, in, in your life, definitely the Word of God is going to be there. Now, today I'm going to teach you how to get the Word of God and also how to prepare for the presence of God to come into your life. We were told in the Word of God that Jesus was baptized in the Holy Ghost. You see, that was the first thing that happened to him by the river Jordan when John the Baptist baptized him. The Bible tells us that when he was baptized, as he was coming up, the heavens opened and then a voice came after the Holy Spirit descended upon him. The voice came and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And by the way, that word fulfilled what the book of Psalm already uh, prophesied, already predicted about Jesus. So the Word of God was just being confirmed to him uh, by the spoken word. Hallelujah. See, the spoken word from heaven confirmed that word. And I'm sure he must have believed that word by the time, I mean, when he was going uh, into that water. So Jesus already had the word in him. 
He is being filled with the Word of God, with the power of the Word. So as he went into that water, the power of the Spirit now came and joined with the Word that is in his life. So we are going to be looking into this today because we are living in a time whereby the believers need to know the power of the Spirit. You need to know how to get the power of the Spirit into your life. When you come follow these steps, I'm going to teach you, I'm going to guide you through, and you begin to practice it, you will see the power of God begin to move in your life. It is time we begin to go deeper and deeper in God. Believers need to understand the Word of God. You need to be filled with the knowledge of God. Without getting the knowledge of God into your life, power cannot manifest. Power can't come. Your life has to be first prepared before power can come, before the Holy Spirit comes. One of the ways that we prepare our lives is getting into the Word of God. The Bible tells us that let the Word of God dwell in you richly. That's Colossians 2.10. It says, let the Word of God dwell in you richly. The Word of God must dwell in you. You must, be, you must be studying the Word of God. You must be reading the Word of God. You must allow the Word of God to influence your life. The Word of God will influence our life. Now, when... When a believer or whatever, when you begin to read the Word of God, there is an effect. He said, my son, you will make me happy when you have wisdom. The book of Proverbs tells us how to get wisdom, especially in, in chapter 2. Especially in chapter 2, he tells us how we must hunger for the Word of God, how we must do everything to get the Word of God in some Two, he tells you how you need to be hungry for the Word of God, how you need to devote your time, your energy, your strength to get the Word of God. But you see, you need to, to do that. Uh, I, I was making this exa example recently. Do you know rubber? Rubber is extracted from a tree. I mean, we have all kinds of trees. However, there's a particular, you see, there's a particular tree which is called uh, a rubber tree. And from that rubber now, it, uh, 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 from that tree, rubber is extracted from it. Look at the amazing wonders that God had done. And there are different trees whereby you get cocoa, where, where bomb vita is made. So there are different things whereby in, in, in this the, all the natural resources that God has given to us on earth to be able, I mean, for our own benefit. Hallelujah. It's the same way. See the word of God. It's, uh, now, the book of Peter, Second Peter chapter 1 tells us, it says, according to his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. So, according to his divine power, in that word, he has given unto us all things. So, we need to learn how to extract it, how to take it out. We must learn how to take this thing, different thing that we need from the Word of God. Now, our heart must be fully open to believe the Word of God that all things that we need are in there. According to His divine power, then again, we were told in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah it said, with joy, you shall draw water out of the well of salvation. Now, the, the, the word is, is a well. With joy, it means we need to be happy. We need to believe. We need to know. Our faith must be on it. Oh, glory, hallelujah. We must, tot we must put our trust in that word of God. When you begin to get the knowledge, when you begin to get the reality of the word of God, you will know there is so much in that word. You do not want to play with it. I mean, you don't want to mess about with that word of God. It's that the word of God is powerful, it's quick and powerful, it's sharper than any to your soul. Now, you don't want to just be looking at the word in the natural, in the, in the natural sense of it, because the word of God is just beyond the letter that you're reading. When the Holy Spirit comes, it will quicken the word of God. Now, but I just want to bring us back again so that we can go step by step. I've just gone way ahead there, just been going on. Wow, <laughs> I need to kind of step back a little bit so that, because I want our viewers to understand this. I want you to get it. I want you to get the power of God. You can receive power. This is the mission that has been committed unto us. 
that the people may receive power. He said, ye shall receive power after which the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me. It is time to be able to receive power. Now, what, the first thing you want to do, just as I was explaining earlier on, that in the Word of God is everything. We must know how to draw it from it, how to draw those things that we are looking for. And we must believe that those things that we, we are looking for, those things that you want, they're in there. You see, in most cases, the problem that people are going through is this. The world has been so structured with needs. Everybody believes that they have needs, needs, needs. Needs has taken the, probably 99.9% of, it's captured 99.9% .9 of a man's heart. The percentage that people have left to now say they need God. More than what, more than their daily need is so minimal. But now you have to turn it around because you must not be driven by needs. You must be driven by the word of God. According as the divine power has given unto us all things that pertain to life and goodness, needs must not fill your heart. It is the word of God that needs to fill your heart. So that chain of wants and needs need to be broken. Because that is the only way you can begin to trust God. You can be patient, you can calm down and be able to trust God and rely on the word of God to be able to receive. He said, with joy you shall draw water out of the well of salvation. With joy. Now when your soul is filled with needs, there is no joy. You can't find joy at all. You can be hearing the word of God. It's not even going in. You need to turn to that word of God. Now the word of God must first come in. You must make room for the Word of God. The Word of God must come into your heart. It must come into your soul. You must be well hungry for the Word of God. This is how the chain of needs can be broken. This is how breakthrough comes. I said when Jesus got into that water and be baptized and be baptized of John, the heavens opened because the Holy Spirit came. The heavens opened when the Holy Spirit came, and then the voice said, this is my beloved and who I am well pleased. Now he's just speaking, speaking scripture. It is not by might. It is not by power. But by my spirit, says the Lord. I have received the commandment. That the fire of God will fall. I have received the commandment that there will be revival in many life. Now, see, this is what the Word of God has done. It is the Word of life. It's already been, already been spoken. So Jesus has sought that Word. He has filled his life with that Word. So by the time he now got to Jordan, the Word of God made him to surrender to John to be baptized. Now, most people don't fill their lives with the Word of God whereby they can submit, whereby they can yield their lives to God. Now, when he submitted his life before John, he was before God. When the word of God dwell in us, we will know how to yield. We will know when to yield. We will know how to submit. And we will know when to submit and who to submit to. He knew that John had the word of God because he was preaching repentance. He was preaching exactly what it is in the heart of God. Today, we need people that can preach what is in the heart of God. When you hear what is in the heart of God, your life will change. Things will change for you. It has to change because it's what is in the heart of God. Because when we preach, when 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 we bring what is in the heart of God out, when we bring it out, definitely something is in there. The substance is in there. However, when that word is not the word that is in the heart of God, it's just full of junk. Now, we don't want to be filled with John. We want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. We want to be filled with the Spirit. Now, everything has been settled in there. Everything has been made possible. Jesus fought the battle. He ran, he ran the race ahead of us. 
Hallelujah. And then you say, follow me. Now, we need to follow. You need to learn now to follow. Now, today, I'm bringing that word and the power of the word and the power of the spirit to connect you to God. You need to be connected. It's about being connected. Today, it's all about being connected. It is time for you to be connected. Now, you said everything seems to be chaotic. Maybe you're bound with drug. Maybe you're bound with nicotine. Maybe you're going through hell. Maybe you're going through one thing and the other. Maybe everything is just collapsing. Maybe you feel, oh, yeah, there's no way out. Let me quickly give you this testimony. A friend of mine uh, wrote to me one time. He said, please help me. Whatever you can help me. Now, this friend of mine has been to us many times. We ask him to surrender his life to the Lord. He just shunned it. You know when your friend is telling you something, you just don't take him serious. Now, by a time came, he was in trouble. And then he wrote to me. He said, please, uh, I need your help. When I'm walking on the street, that the power, some power is just oppressing him. No, you know that's the problem. You know that's demonic. He said, when I walk on the street, I can just feel the power oppressing me, oppressing, oppressing. And then again, he said, he's done everything. He said, there's no job. He had done everything. He could not find one. Then not only that, he was studying to be a scientist. Now there's a particular model where he's studying, the country where he's studying, where he's doing his studies, they don't allow foreigners to do that particular model because it's not for foreigners. And he needed this particular model to be able to qualify. Huh. Now that's a problem. So he said, please, whatever you can do, help me. Ah, I said, now it's time to show the power of God, to show the salvation of God. So I prepare a tape, and I send it to him. I prepare a tape, a message, and then I send it to him. Wow, glory, hallelujah. As he was listening to this message, the fire got blew to him, bang, and he ran out of the room. And not only that fire that blew on him, he said, there's another thing also. He said, he starts speaking in this funny language. You call it funny language. I said, you're speaking in funny language? Keep speaking it. I knew God had got hold of him and baptized him in the Holy Ghost. He said, what I mean by fire? He said, what I mean by when you turn to where the word of God is? There are some words that are from the heart of God. There are some words that just junk. When the, when the power of the one, the power of the spirit is operating, is moving, you know the action will take place. Now God baptized him, God changed his life. Then suddenly now he now wrote to me, he said, now this time when he's walking on the street, I mean when he's walking, he's just receiving messages. You see, when God baptized you, when God filled your life, your life begins to change. The word of God begins to flow in your life. It begins to flow because it will wash you. It will continue to wash you. Many believers have not experienced anything like this. Many believers have not experienced what it means for the word of God to operate in their life and the power of the Spirit to operate in their lives. What most believers are just saying, they just, they just say they have the Holy Ghost, they have the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues and nothing happens. How can you have the Holy Ghost and you say nothing happens? How can you speak in tongues and say nothing happens? It means that tongue is not genuine or maybe it's old. You know when you're running a car and you've been driving a car for one year, even after before one year, you need to change the oil. If you don't change the oil, the oil has become thin. And then the engine, you, you, you damage the engine. So you have to change the engine, not top it up. You have to change, you have to drain out the one that is in that engine after one year or before a year, depending on how many miles you've gone. So you have to take it out and then you they'll pour a new one in. It means you have been renewed. The engine has been renewed. Then you'll be able to run properly. It lubricates well. Now, many believers, you need a top up. You need a change. Many believers are screaming, are going through hell because they don't change their own. They don't desire all this, but they don't know the power of the one, the power of the spirit. Most people don't even know which word to turn to, which word to hear, to listen to. Many have not even learned to hear the word of God at all. They don't even hear God at all. Now, when we are talking about the power of the spirit and the power of the word, I mean, this is a different level. I mean, it's a big change in a man's life, in a believer's life. He will change your life. He will transform you. I mean, my friend was transformed. I mean, this, that's just one off. I mean, there are many testimonies like that. Not only that, Job, 
came came along and the module that he was not allowed to 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 partake in it to to do to sit for breakthrough came because the moment he was filled with the fire the moment the holy ghost came the moment the word of god just began to run through his whole life then prayer began now this man does not know anything about bible but when the fire of God came, he will be so hungry, he will call me, please give me the word of God, give me the word of God. So I began to send him scriptures. I began to send him scriptures. Those are the things that he lived by. Those are the things I followed him with scriptures. It's that those scriptures that keep him alive. Hallelujah. Within a few months, things changed. He got a job. He got a job in a laboratory. I mean, these are not just a job that you get that easy. <laughs> As a foreigner, you don't get that kind of job in that country. He <laughs> got a job in the laboratory. That's how he started. As a technician. That's it. Until he became an environmental scientist. Wow, God changed his life. He became one of the top scientists. Now, this is it. Can God change lives? Of course God can change life. What do you mean, can God change life? You mean, can God do it for me? Yeah, maybe you might be asking, can God do it for me? Of course he can. When you learn to find the word of God, and then the spirit also comes. Many believers don't desire the word of God. You've got to desire the word of God. He said, when you desire the word of God, he will give you the desires of your heart because the word of God begins to change your life. Many have not been broken from their customs and from their traditions. They are holding onto the traditions of their elders. They're holding onto the traditions they have adopted from probably parents. This is how we do it. I traveled up north one time. They said, this is how we do it here. And you, you can't continue the way you do it, the way your elders have been doing it and receive anything. The reason why the fire of God had not, had not fallen is because you've been continuing. You are doing the way it's been done. You need to turn and change to how the Word of God is going to do it, how God wants to do things. We are changed every day. He said, he said we, the Word of God, it, it renews us every day. Behold, I do a new thing. Meaning, there's also a new thing. Every time there's a new thing. He said, when a new wine is going to be poured, it has to be poured into a new wine skin, not into an old wine skin. So you can see that if you want a new wine, if you want a fresh, a fresh outpouring of the Spirit, a renew of the Spirit, you must also prepare your, your vessel. In, in, see, church, we need to learn to prepare our vessels. We continue in the old vessel, so the new vessel, we, we say we need the outpouring of the Spirit. You cannot have the outpouring of the Spirit while the old vessel remains. We must desire a new vessel. When the new vessel comes, you will see that the outpouring becomes greater. In most cases, when it gets greater, we begin to see many unbelievable miracles, unbelievable breakthroughs. God wants to bring a revival into your life. He wants to bring a revival into your home. However, you must be open to it. You see, the Word of God will open your heart. The Word of God will dip, will dip, dip in you. It will dip, dip into your soul, into your heart. I mean, most people, they continue to be oppressed. One of the reasons why people stay being oppressed is because they don't give room to the Word of God to work in their life. There are things that we can extract from the Word of God, just as I use the, uh, uh, the, the example of rubber tree. You extract rubber from that tree. You don't go to every tree and begin to extract rubber from it. No, it won't come. There are some trees you get fruits, you get apple, you get oranges, you get all kinds of things. You get peas. Now, you don't go there and say, I'm looking for rubber, I want to extract rubber from this. No, you can't. So the, the, similarly, when you look into the Word of God, there are certain things that you can get. There are certain things you, you have to look for. When you're looking for it, God also will show you where to find it. There are different things you can find in the Word of God. Hallelujah. See, it said, according as the divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Now, before I continue today, we're just going to take a short break. And we're going to come right back, right back. And after this, I'm going to be praying for you. Because many of you, you have complained to, to us that... Um, we enjoy your program, but after the, the program, you don't spend time to pray for us. Now, I'm listening, and I want to make sure I do that today before we come out there. So, do not go away after this break, and then we'll come back.
I believe you have been blessed by that short clip. Now today I'm going to be praying for you. I'm going to be praying for that the Lord will touch your heart. Um, you have heard, I mean, as we have started this series of the power of the Word and the power of the Spirit, and also with the short testament that you've heard, I believe you desire that God will touch you. God will touch you. God will remove sicknesses from your body. God will remove every ailment from your life. And the fire of God, God will restore your home. God will restore your life. Whatever you desire that God to do for you, He will do it. And I believe that through our broadcast, great things can happen in your life. Now, I'm going to pray for you before we come up there. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for your people. I pray for every man and woman. I pray, oh God, that your fire will rest upon them. That the glorious power of the word, of the, of the spirit, and we move deeply in their soul. Lord, I break every yoke, I break every sicknesses, I break every turmoil in their lives, every delusion, every darkness, every confusion. I break it off. Every power of drug and nicotine, all kinds of bondages, oh Lord, I break it. I pray also, oh Lord, that repentance will come out of every soul. Out of their soul, repentance will come so that forgiveness can follow, that liberty can follow. Be free. Let your life be free and let joy fill your soul. Thank you, eternal Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Now I'm going to encourage you. I want to hear from you. Now, you make sure you share your testimony. If you've given your life to the Lord today, uh, you share your testimony with us. That the Word of God touched you and you give your life. Now, the email is on the screen for you. And even the number you can call, you can call our prayer line is there for you. That way you can share your testimony. And whatever God might have done in your life today, uh, I encourage you, you share your testimony. And I believe God will continue to be with you and bless you and do a tremendous thing in your life. You keep watching our program, and God bless you till I see you again. It is not by might, it is not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. I have received the commandment that the fire of God will fall. I have received the commandment that there will be revival in many lives.